church. Come on, let's worship together. What's like a burning prison I dwelt? No freedom from my sorrow I feel. But Jesus came and listened to me. Glory to God, He set me free. Yes, He set me free. Yes, He set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. And I'm glory. somebody near you, and if you can say this honestly and truthfully, um, then say, he set me free. If you can't say it honestly and truthfully, say, he's still working on me. <laughs> Amen. He's still working on me. Amen. You can be seated. Um, I can hear nothing up here if you can help me with that. Um, do I sound okay out there? Do I sound like a TV preacher or better? Better, okay. All right, as long as I sound good out there, all right. Praise God. Well, I am here, first of all, to just say kudos to all of you for last week, all the hard work, all the financial investment. Amen. And so thankful for Pastor Stephen and Jessica who hit the ground running from Ark City and took this outreach and got it across the finish line. Amen. Amen. So we appreciate you. We appreciate them. We appreciate, of course, the Lord. And then lastly, we appreciate the Hispanic Church of God and their partnership. That may have been the best outreach food I've ever eaten in my life. Hallelujah. I don't know how often you get steak and chicken fajitas for outreach, but uh, amen. And you got R&B. You know, not rhythm and blues, but rice and beans. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you gave us a little rhythm and blues. Yeah, so it was good. All right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I am here for another purpose, and that is to receive an offering. So I'm going to have our, our ushers come down. And I just want to say to you that um, your giving not only keeps the church operating and oils all the machinery around here and sends finances to missions and to do outreach and to fund kids and youth ministries. But your giving keeps God's blessing over your home. 
It keeps God's blessing upon your life. You know, we need open windows, yes. We need God's blessing over our homes. But we also need God's blessing in our life. I know some of you are facing physical challenges. There are physical things taking place in your body. Attacks from the enemy, sickness, disease, or injury. And I'm telling you, by faith today, sow a seed into the kingdom of God that the windows of heaven would not only be open over your life, your, your home, but that God's physical healing touch would enter your body today. Let no disobedience be between you and God today, but let every obedience, amen, be done today. Father, we ask for your blessing upon the giver today, no matter how they give it, whether they give online, through the various means, they text to give, they place their offerings in the offering bags or in the offering boxes in the foyer. However your people give today, may they give it, sow it in faith. May they tithe in obedient action that your blessings may be upon their home and their lives and that your healing touch may vibrate and invigorate their physical being. And I pray that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Stand to your feet as you give. Let's continue to worship. When night has fallen and fear is calming, still you're calling me. When faith is lost and my hope exhausted, you will be my strength. And when my mind says I'm not good enough, Me. Your love is on and on and it won't let go I feel it breaking out just like an echo Your love is on and on and it won't let go I feel it breaking out just like an echo
feel the same God that is in this room and, and moving in our presence is the same God that is sitting in your living room at home when no one else is around. When you wake up in the morning, it's the same God. When you first open your eyes, think about your, your day. It's the same God that is in this room, the same God that we are worshiping. So don't wait for Sunday to worship. Don't wait for this moment to worship. It's easier here because we are gathered like-minded with one, in one accord but God can move that same that same power you feel you can feel that anywhere I encourage you if you're watching online take hold of these songs sing these with all your heart worship with all you have and let God do what he wants to do in your life amen let's pray one more time father God I thank you for your presence I thank you that you can move wherever you want father we give you permission to move in this place and in our lives, Father God. I pray that you pour me out, empty me, Father, of myself. Fill me with your presence, Father. I pray the same thing for the people of this church, Father. Fill us up with your presence, Father. Let this be a house of worship, a house of prayer, Father God. Do what you want to do. Do what you want to do in this place, Father God. We'll give you praise. We love you in Jesus' name. Come on, let's continue to worship.
Jesus has given me. When I open up my mouth and miracles start breaking out, I have the authority. Come on, lift your voice. Jesus has given me. When I lift my voice and shout, and every wall comes crashing down. I have the authority. Jesus has given me. When I open up my mouth, here it goes. Stop breaking out. I have the authority.
Hallelujah. If you need something today, it's in the person of Jesus. If you need salvation, it's in Jesus. If you need healing, it's in Jesus. If you need a miracle, it's in Jesus. If you need anything at all, it's in Jesus. And before I preach today, I just want to give you an opportunity to respond to Jesus. He's the way maker. He's made the way for you today, and he's carved out the path. He's removed all the obstacles. He's removed all the hindrances. All you've got to do is come and receive. If you need a physical healing, if you need a touch today, I'm going to ask you to do something. I'm going to ask you to move out of your seat. I'm going to ask you to come down to this altar area, the front here of the church, as we sing and worship a little bit more. And I'm going to ask you to do exactly what Haley sang Speak the name of Jesus. You don't need a hand laid on you. You don't need a word prophesied over you. All you got to do is invite the answer, Jesus, today. You can even start from your seat. You can even start right now. You can come out of your seat saying, Jesus, 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 I receive. Jesus, 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 I receive. While we sing, just make your way. Speak Jesus. Hallelujah.
even when you don't see it or know it or recognize it or perceive it. He's working for you right now. of God's Spirit rolling from front to back. And if you're back there and you haven't yet experienced a healing or a touch from God yet, it's on its way. It's just rippling its way back. Just like as the tide rolls in and the tide rolls out and the waves crash in and then they they go back out. I've asked Pastor Reuben to pray a prayer over you right now. And if you have yet to receive, I want you to receive. Receive from this psalmist right now. Father God, I thank you. You're in this room like you promised us, Lord. Every heart open. Every heart ready, Father. Father, your word says you won't let us down, Father. So we're asking for a move, a special mighty move right now. Break chains that are binding, Father. Save lives that are lost, Lord Jesus. By your Spirit, Father God, move. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Bless your people now, Father, who came. Who came seeking you, Father. Who came seeking a move from you, Father. We are hungry. Father, we won't be satisfied with ordinary. We're not satisfied with ordinary. So I thank you for your move. Bless us now in Jesus' name. Amen. We praise you, God. Just fill this room with your prayer while they just, just play. Just fill this room with your prayer. We're about to transition to the word. But just fill the atmosphere with your prayer, with your thanksgiving. God, we're thankful. We're thankful for your touch. God, we're so thankful that you've not left us alone. 
God, we give you thanks and praise. Fill this atmosphere. Charge this atmosphere. With the Come on, call on his name. Woo! Sharabarikaso. Call on his name. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you, God. We praise you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Right now, the answer to unforgiveness and bitterness is in the name of Jesus. I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to preach. This has come up to my mind three different times during this song and this altar time. If you're harboring unforgiveness and bitterness in your heart, you're not hurting anybody but yourself. And you're only keeping God's healing and God's blessing from falling upon you. But if you will right now, in the name of Jesus, turn that person, turn those people, turn that situation over to God. If you could be like Joseph in this moment, if you could be like Joseph of the Old Testament, Joseph of Genesis 50, they may have meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. That it might be as it is today. So today you can be free. Today you can have liberty. Today you can have healing. Today, but you got to let it go. Right now, in the name of Jesus, that one name, in that one moment, in this one opportunity, you can turn it all loose and you can be free. You can walk out of here free. Totally free. 100% free. Hallelujah, right now, in the name of Jesus, if that's you and you're ready to let it go, pray this prayer after me. Father, right now, what happened to me was unjust, but I give it over to you. I free myself of that past and of those people. I give them to you right now. You do what you will with this situation. But as far as I'm concerned, I'm through with it. I receive your healing. I receive your forgiveness. I walk now in freedom. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Everybody give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before you guys run off, just stay, just all just stay in place. You guys, the rest of you can be seated. Just stay in place. And you can throw the title of the message up. I'm preaching a message on suddenly today. And I'll, I'll get into that here in a moment, what all that means and what all that represents. But today, I just kept seeing an answer of prayer on the platform. And when all of our music, for the most part, left in February of 21, it's been quite a struggle and quite a journey. And I wish God would have done something suddenly. But he did something gradually that I I couldn't predict, I couldn't have done, I couldn't have manifested. David and Mike stayed faithful and one by one, 
They haven't come in in droves. Musicians haven't, haven't come in groups. But one by one, God has gradually built a worship team. And I, for one, am thankful for the worship and the praise that was in this atmosphere, a testimony of faithfulness, a testimony of obedience. It took me talking to Reuben three times. Amen. <laughs> and one by one, people have just, just shown up. Haley, Jerry, Josh. Kyle was an early adopter. <laughs> He's a man of change. <laughs> but one by one, God has done something great, and I want to acknowledge that in your presence. I want to acknowledge that in, in their presence. And God is not done. Amen. We're believing for more singers. We're believing for an acoustic guitar player. And I believe that God is going to gradually, continually, because we have a project in front of us. We have a destiny in front of us. We have a purpose in front of us that God is going to write songs through this team, that God is going to give songs not only to this church, not only to this city, but to this nation through the team that he is building. And if you believe that, give God praise right now. Amen. You guys can go down. Thank you. Thank you for letting me say that. I'm talking about suddenly, suddenly, from the etymology and history, the word suddenly means a dramatic interruption in human affairs. With unexpected or immediate intervention, release, provision, healings, deliverances, miracles, blessings, etc. Repeatedly in the Bible, God intervened with suddenlies. We're going to look at one of those suddenlies here today in Acts 16, two verses, 25 and 26. But at midnight, let somebody know that it was midnight. Y'all know what midnight is, right? Midnight is when one day ends and another day begins. At midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately, all the doors were opened, and everyone's, all in everyone, all the doors, everyone's chains were loosed. Father, would you speak through me today what you want your people to hear in Jesus' name, amen. Set up for a suddenly. I want you to hit your neighbor and say, you've been set up for a suddenly. You've been set up for a suddenly. You got to hit them again. They're not listening. But the setup for the suddenly is obedience. Paul and Silas were in the center of God's will when they came to Philippi. They were directed there by God. According to Acts 16, 6 through 10, Paul wanted to preach in Asia, but the Holy Spirit forbade him. Paul wanted to go Bithynia, but then again the Holy Spirit did not allow it. And while he was pondering where they should go, he saw a vision of a man from Macedonia who said, Come over here and help us. It is my opinion that the man from Macedonia in Paul's vision is the Philippian jailer. If the demoniac of Gadara, when Jesus showed up on the shores, could cry out for worship when he had 6,000 demons on the inside of him, but yet he could cry out to be free, then the Philippian jailer, although he was bound by chains of sin, even though he had the keys of all the doors, he himself was bound. I believe his spirit could cry out. Come help me. Come help me. They were in the middle 
of God's will, right in the center of God's will when they found the prayer meeting that was taking place on the riverside. And there Paul spoke to them about Jesus. And there was women there who began to get saved and become part of the founding of the church. Paul and Silas were in the center of God's will in verses 16 through 18 when a damsel who had been bound by a spirit of divination or a spirit of fortune telling or as Jensen Franklin preached a decade ago, a spirit of python. And Paul cast out that demon, and that girl was set free. But not all were happy that she was free. For those who had used her to get gain, for those who had used her to tell the fortunes of others so they might get money in their pockets, found out that they had lost their ability to get wealth. They grabbed Paul and Silas. And they tried them unjustly. They stripped their clothes off and beat them with rods unjustly. They thrust them into the innermost part of the prison, chained their arms and put their feet in stocks unjustly. But yet they were in the center of God's will. Listen to me. Somebody hear what I'm telling you. Yes, God sent you to Philippi. Yes, God sent you to prayer meeting. Yes, God sent you to preach. Yes, God sent you to cast out demons. But God also has sent you to the prison. They were in the center of God's will. Here's my point. When things don't turn out the way you planned, don't second guess God. Don't abort the process. Stay the course. And stay true to who you are in Christ. Paul and Silas didn't get upset with God because where they ended up. They didn't get upset with God. Oh God, they tried me. Oh God, they beat me. Oh God, they imprisoned me. Here I came here to do what you wanted me to do. And now look at where I am. I think I've whined a little bit. In the past, I did that too easy. That just that was cathartic. I think it's just, it's just too easy to do. No, absolutely not. They stayed the course. They stayed true to who they were. They were men of prayer and praise before the trial. They were men of prayer and praise before the beating. They were men of prayer and praise before the imprisonment. So why should those things stop them from being men of prayer and praise? Somehow the church is given the wrong image of this text. We act like just because they were tried, just because they were beaten, just because they were imprisoned unjustly, that that's why they prayed and sang. But that's not it at all. It was who they were. They were men of prayer. They were men of praise. They were men of song. They were men of intercession. And so they did what came natural. They prayed and they sang unto God just as if they were not in the prison, just as if they would have if they were anywhere else. I want somebody to hear me. Faith and trust in God are not built on the playground. Faith and trust in God are not built on the battlefield. Faith and trust in God are built in God's waiting room. When you are on hold, when you are held up, when you are stopped, and you do not know why. Oh, it's easy. 
when you're out on the playground to have faith in God. It's easy to trust God when everything is going your way. Even on the battlefield when Paul was casting out demons, it was the very presence and power of the Holy Spirit. But that's not where you and I learn how to trust God. That's not where you and I learn how to put our faith into practice. We learn it when we don't know why we're going through what we're going through. We don't know why God's got us in this room. We don't know why our hands are chained. We don't know why our feet are in stocks. I have no explanation. I thought God was going to do this. I thought God was going to do that. I thought, I thought, I thought, I thought, I thought. But God has set you up for a suddenly. I want to look at the word suddenly. You see, God takes his time. But when he moves, he moves suddenly. You can give me that second one. When he moves, he moves suddenly. God takes his time, but when he moves, he moves suddenly. A suddenly is a moment when God surprisingly breaks into time and space with an intervention of his kingdom and for the purpose of his kingdom. The purpose of his kingdom we'll get to. You see, suddenlies come at the end of waiting. Suddenlies come at the end of waiting. They don't just come because you're praying, and they don't just come because you're praising. You should be doing that. But that's not why the earth quaked, and that's not why the doors opened, and that's not why the chains fell off of everyone's hands and feet. God sent Paul and Silas to the city of Philippi to break something, to change something, to do something for his kingdom. And to do that, he had to get them into the center of the city and in the center of the prison. Luke writes and calls it the innermost part of the prison. And this jailer gladly bound them there. When they were bound, they did not know a suddenly would come as quick as it did. The prisoners didn't know a suddenly was coming. The jailer didn't know a suddenly was coming. Only God knew what he had in store. And it is out of that prison, out of that darkness. One of the commentaries I read this week said there was zero visibility, but maximum pain. They could see nothing in front of them. Paul could not see Silas. Silas could not see Paul. But yet God could see both of them. And while they were praying and while they were singing, the process of their waiting, the result of their obedience, their keeping the course, their remaining true to the purpose, revealed what God had in store. Suddenly. Suddenly. While Paul and Silas were praying, while prisoners were listening, while the jailer was sleeping, suddenly God shook the building to the very foundation that the doors could no longer remain in their locks and that the chains and the stocks could no longer remain in their position. God shook 
the building so violently that the only word that can be used to describe it was an earthquake. But suddenly, but suddenly, something happened. And Luke uses a word to describe that happening immediately. Not only did I come to introduce you to a word suddenly, but I also come to introduce you to the word immediately. We'll get to its meaning here in a moment. But before that, listen, all, A-L-L, all the doors opened and everyone's chains were loosed. That includes those who were not praying and those who were not praising. Because two men stayed the course. Because two men stayed true to who they were. Everyone was loosed by their faith. You see, suddenlies not only shift us, they shift others. Meaning... When you move, other people feel it. They felt the building shake. They felt it. And when you're loosed, other people get loosed. And as you go from one season into the next season, or as you move from the now situation into the next situation. Others are going with you. Amen. Now to this word immediately. Suddenlies precede immediately. Suddenly precedes immediately. Meaning on the heels of a suddenly. The word suddenly means unexpected or unexpectedly. God does something immediately, on the spot, or instantly. So let's say it like this. On the heels of the unexpected, God does something immediately. Suddenly, immediately, suddenly, the earthquake. And immediately, suddenly, immediately, maybe this is best seen in the Old Testament. The Old Testament word, suddenly, found in Malachi 3.1. I'm not going to read that verse. I'm not going to talk about that verse. I'm just going to talk about the word, suddenly. In the Old Testament, the word suddenly carries both connotations. It carries both that which is done surprisingly and that which is done straight away. In the Old Testament, there is this understanding that a suddenly is a moment with termination. It's a moment that changes into another moment. It's the moment when something stops and something new begins. And it happens surprisingly on the spot. Instantly, it took place. That is the equivalent of Acts 16, 25 at midnight. At midnight, it's still as dark as it was at 11.59. <laughs> right? At 11.59 and 59 seconds. Right? You and I cross over into a new day. And it happens night after night after night. So Luke chooses the word midnight to explain how suddenlies precede immediately. 
Maybe I need you to get a grasp of it immediately. You see, immediately the fever left, Mark 1, 31. Immediately the wind ceased, Mark 4, 39. Immediately her issue of blood stopped, at, I mean, excuse me, Luke 8, 24. Immediately the leper was cleansed, Matthew 8, 31. Immediately their eyes received sight, Matthew 20, 34. Immediately he arose and took up his bed and went his way, glorifying God, Mark 2, 12. Immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue was loose and he spoke and praised God, Luke 1, 64. Immediately. Immediately. 60 times in Mark, over 30 times in Luke, this ministry of Jesus, these things that Christ himself does, happen immediately. They happen on the heels of a suddenly. Without foreknowledge, suddenly God did it. Immediately. I wasn't expecting it. I wasn't planning it. I don't know how it happened. But it happened. In a moment. In an instant. I went from sick to heal. I went from broke to prospering. I went from whatever you lay out the scenario And the reason I say this to you is because I want to talk lastly about your suddenly. We've talked about Paul and Silas and we've talked about the Old Testament and we've talked about Jesus. But what about your suddenly? I want to help somebody. No matter how long or how hard it has been. God has a suddenly for you. No matter how long, no matter how hard, God has a suddenly for you. Several years ago, in my uncle's church in Tennessee, There was a strong man, W.D. Roberts. And out of the blue, W.D. got sick. He became weak. He couldn't walk. The doctor said he got something that came from the country of Vietnam. Very few people in the United States even had it. They didn't even know how to treat it. And for three years, W.D. Roberts could not walk and battled the sickness and the disease. He would refer to it many times as a Job trial. That he felt like Job. He hadn't done anything wrong. He didn't know why this had happened. He had been through hundreds of prayer lines by that time. As a matter of fact, he'd probably given up, if he would be honest, to even get prayed for. But something happened one morning, suddenly. He felt his body receive strength, and he turned out of the bed, and he stepped on the floor, and he began to walk. And from there, that morning, day after day after day, God restored his strength. Didn't take three years, but by the end of one week, by the end of one month, I mean, bam, He was back doing everything he had done. I don't care how long or how hard it's been. I don't care how dark your prison is. God has scheduled a suddenly for you. But the only way you're going to enter into it is to not whine. You're not going to whine your way out of it. It's to stay the course. I know that God sent me to this church. I know that God gave me that job. 
I know that God give me this spouse. I know that I was doing your will when I contracted this disease. I know I was in the center of your will. I did everything you told me to do. I followed you completely, and this is where I find myself. God has a suddenly for you. My advice to you is threefold. Number one, don't forget who you are. If you are a praiser and a prayer, pray hyphen ER. Pray dash ER, a person who prays, an intercessor. If you are a praiser and a prayer prior to what you've gone through, be that now. Be that right now. Be that in this moment. In sickness, in pain, in hardship. Even if you have zero in your checking account. Be that person you were prior to the trial. Your suddenly is coming. A sudden breakthrough is on the way. A sudden shift in the season or situation is on the way. Faithfully continue to do what He told you to do even though it hasn't turned out the way you thought it should. Keep on doing it. A suddenly will come. A suddenly will come. A shift in your situation will come. I'm confident. But I hear the question. When? (laughs) Pastor, when will my suddenly come? I'm glad you asked. I don't know. I just know it will. My job has not been to tell you when it's coming. My job has been to remind you that it's coming. And to remind you not to forget who you are. To remind you to keep on praying and keep on praising. To remind you to be faithful and obedient to the instruction he gave you. Because if you are in the center of his will, there's no safer place to be. Because if you're where you're supposed to be, then God will find you there. So I wrote it like this. Expect the unexpected. (laughs) Believe for the unbelievable. Look for what you cannot see. For God may intervene today. Or He may intervene tomorrow. Or He may intervene next week. Or next month. But I know that I know that I know that I know that I know. That a suddenly is coming. If you believe that, I want you to stand. What you playing? Another in the fire. Good, like that, like that. Another in the fire, like that. I want you to pray this prayer with me. I I wish I had given it to to Taylor. I, I, I... So you could see it, but it's simple. It's got a few words. I'm going to read it, and then we're going to do it. Father, I believe you are going to intervene suddenly in my life. Father, I believe you are going to intervene suddenly in my life. Father, I believe you are going to intervene suddenly in my life. If you believe that, let's all pray. Father, I believe. I believe you are going to intervene suddenly in my life. Suddenly in my life. Father, I believe. I believe you're going to intervene suddenly in my life. I don't know when and I don't know how. But from now till then, from now till then, From now till then, you will find me praying. You will find me praising. You will find me singing your goodness. 
I believe Paul and Silas were saying, thank you, God. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for filling me with the Holy Spirit. Thank you for calling me into the ministry. Thank you, thank you, thank you that I've been counted worthy to suffer shame for your name. If that's you, as we sing a little bit of this song, you pray on your own. You pray on your own and then we'll close. Hallelujah. Suddenly's coming. Your suddenly's coming. Hallelujah. That line in this song where it talks about that space wearing thin, I'm telling you. Between your struggle and trial and God's answer, that, that space is wearing thin. You're soon to move over to a different. You're soon to move over to a different situation. You're soon to step into a next different season it's about to happen that space between is just wearing thin keep on singing this week keep on praying and when God does it let somebody know amen let somebody know come back Wednesday and let us know come back next Sunday and let us know if it happens next month let us know amen Father, I pray right now over your people. I pray your rich and abundant blessing, and I pray suddenly, the blessing of suddenly, the blessing of immediately, I pray over them as they go to their different homes and to their different stations and their different situations. I pray that over them in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Love on 15 people, and then you can be leaving.